and you want to turn over there, I'll give you a second to get that out. Uh, Alan can get it up on the screen, I'm sure. First John 4. First John 4, verse 9 says, This is how God showed his love among us. What's Christmas about? It's how God showed his love among us. Uh, he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. Praise God. This is how he showed his love for us, that before we ever knew him, before we ever acknowledged him, before we ever were, he sent his son to die in our place, that our sin can be atoned for. None of the sacrifices of the old system were sufficient to do the work, but he has given us a new and better sacrifice, a once and for all sacrifice that his son had to come in the manger before he could go to the cross. He had to be born among us before he could take our sin to the cross. So Christmas and Easter story go together. One without the other doesn't work. Together they complete uh, the, the, the salvation of mankind. And one of these days, and I believe soon, we're going to see the Lord return in the clouds with a shout and a trumpet, and we're going to go home to be with the Lord. But now we get to celebrate his birth and give thanks for the love of God. Paul said in Galatians 4, verse 4, when the time had fully come, God sent his son. Rhonda, you want to go ahead and come up and we'll get ready to do our song. When the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive, get this, get what Paul said, full rights as sons of God. Amen. Amen. In the old covenant, those of us that are Gentiles would have always had to be outside. We could worship God, but we'd always be at a distance, always outside. In fact, only one man, only one time of year could go into the presence of God under the old system and then only with the blood of sacrifice. But because Christ, the new and living way, has forever done away with that old system, now all of us have full rights as the sons and daughters, the children of God, to come access uh, the, uh, the throne of the Lord. So this morning, my wife and I are going to start things off with uh, O Holy Night. taught 
us to love one another. His love is. Thank you. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy <laughs> in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy is the Lord. Oh, praise his name forever. His power and glory nevermore proclaim. His power God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this morning, I want to light the first of our candles this morning to represent hope. Because without that holy night, without that night when Christ was born, what hope do we have? Things would have just continued the same as they always had been. Sin would have continued to pile up and, and the ways of man would have never been changed and there would still be a looking forward to a, a wondering when would Messiah come, when would things change, but all oh, that holy night, all oh, that night when Christ was born, all oh, that time when Jesus came to be born for us, among us, uh, with us. And so uh, this morning we're going to sing a uh, a congregational song uh, right now. It's a. Let me get this thing rolling. So I hope that you will sing with me as we sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
with us the hope and the longing of generations to see God with us that would come and bring hope to a lost and a dark and a, a world that was without hope every Jewish male child was born and they would wonder if his lineage was correct if he was of the correct tribe is this the Messiah is this the one that's coming is he going to be the one that will rise up but when the time was fully right when the time was fully right, Matthew says it like this in Matthew 1. This is how the birth of Christ Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to put her away quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, thou son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary unto you as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and they named the child Jesus. Let's go. All right. We're going to sing. That was See, I thought I knew what I was doing. It'll be all right. Here we go. The first Noel. Cool. 
first Noel. Born is the king of Israel. Those were the announcement that was made to the wise men on that night, that the Savior was born. <clears throat> and because the Savior was born, I light the second candle uh, <clears throat> in our service to represent peace. He came to bring hope he came to bring peace to us today. Without Christ, there is no peace. No matter what our leaders may say, no matter what kind of treaties may be signed, no matter what folks may say, without Christ, there is no peace. But if we know Christ, <clears throat> there is peace available. Even though the storm rages, even though the world is in turmoil, we have peace through Christ Jesus our Lord. Luke says this in Luke chapter number 1, verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin, pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this was. The angel said to her, do not be afraid. Aren't you glad? We talked about that in Sunday school this morning. There is a do not be afraid. There is a do not fear in the Bible for every day of the year. That phrase is repeated in one form or another. Do not fear, do not be afraid, fear not. 365 times in the Bible, there is literally a do not fear every day for the child of God. But at special moments like this, when God puts something in our path that's huge, that's bigger than we can understand, there's this message of peace, peace. I'm giving you a big job to do. You've got a big assignment. You've got a big challenge, but I'm giving you my peace to be with you. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. He said, you will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, and he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be, Mary asked the angel, because I have never been with a man. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. <laughs> and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. I love verse 37. For nothing shall be impossible with God. Well, that's some of the peace of the Christmas message, isn't it? Regardless of what we're facing, I can have peace knowing that nothing is impossible with God. And Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. May it be unto me as you have said. Then the angel left. Folks, that scripture challenged me a number of years ago, and it continues to do, to do so today. When God presents us with a big thing, how often am I guilty of saying, oh, God, is there any way to change this? Can something else happen? Can we do it a different way? I really don't want to do this. I want that spirit that Mary had Amen. that says, I'll be your servant. Let it be even as you have said. Amen. So at this time, 
uh, I'm going to ask uh, Sister Lynn to come and minister to us in song this morning. And so she's going to make her way up and give me a chance to enjoy, give us a chance to enjoy the message of this song and me a chance to rest my voice for just a minute. I think you'll recognize my accompanist on this song this morning. Luke 2, verse 1 says, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree 
that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the lineage of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time for the baby to born, the, for the baby to be born came. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The third candle that I'm lighting this morning represents <coughs> the joy that we have through Christ. There is joy unspeakable and full of glory that has been made available to us because God sent his son to be born of a virgin, to be born in a manger, to live among us. The, <clears throat> the joy of the Lord gives us strength for whatever it is that we face in this life. Luke 2 verse 8 says, There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were, the King James says, sore afraid. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. There's that message again. Nothing to fear in God. There's nothing to fear in God. Don't be afraid. I'm bringing you good news of great joy. Good news of great joy joy that will be for all the people today in the city of david a savior has been born to you he is christ the lord this will be the sign to you you will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger now i thought about that and we talked about this in our sunday school class but i thought about that <clears throat> i know that they wrapped children they still wrap children today babies you know they they wrap them up all snug and tight so why would that be a sign because aren't all babies wrapped up after they're born you know why would this believe that it was the fact that this child <clears throat> was wrapped up in swaddling cloths this child was wrapped up in what i like to think of as shop rags you know, you can go to Lowe's or Walmart or wherever, and you can buy a box of rags, you know, that you just use in your shop for wiping the grease or oil off your hands or, uh, you know, for, for cleaning up something in the shop. They were the ones that were used, like we talked about in Sunday school this morning, for cleaning up after the animals, for, uh, you know, for, for use in the manger, for cleaning up after they were the ones that would be used to wrap a dead body when it was time to put a, a body away. These were just utility cloths, shop rags. But Christ was wrapped. So it was going to be something that was different from the other children that these shepherds had encountered in their life. Praise God, there's something different about this Jesus. He's not just any old baby laid in a manger. In fact, he's not in the manger anymore. We celebrate the fact that he came and was born and was laid in a manger, but now he's on the right hand of God in heaven, forever living to make intercession for the saints. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. They didn't say you'll notice because his face will be glowing or because he's got like some of these pictures you see, paintings where he's got a halo around his little head. In appearance, he would have looked like any other child. But praise God, he was humble enough to come and to be born among the most poor to show that any, the shepherds were the, the you know, they, they had the lowest job well, what is that job that you can think of that is it, you know, fry chef or is it sanitation engineer? Whatever that job is that you can think of that maybe is kind of low on the totem pole in your mind, they had that job. The shepherds were the ones that were just kind of the low men on the bottom of the, uh, you know, of the pole. First, the message is announced to them. 
Then later we're going to see these three wise men, these three prominent, important, rich uh, folks that, that come. He's available for all of us, for every one of us to receive. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. I want to say that is his one and only Son. His only begotten Son. Now, the rest of us become sons of God by adoption. We are brought into the family of God through adoption, but Christ is His only begotten Son, and He gave Him for us. He did not send His Son into this world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. He sent His Son to save us, not to condemn us, <laughs> because all of us are worthy of condemnation, but he said, I want to save you. I want to bring you into my presence. And that is why the joy that we have represented by that third candle this morning, there's a joy, 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 joy down in my heart, <laughs> down in my heart to stay because of what Christ has done. He came to give us joy. But let me tell you, I'm going to light this fourth candle this morning as we move through. <clears throat> because he came out of love. John 3.16 says he came out of love. 3.17 says not out of condemnation, but out of love he came and he did all that he did for us. I, I don't know at what point in Jesus' life he came to the full knowledge of exactly what he was going to have to do. I, I kind of like to believe that he grew up a, a normal child like, uh, like I did and, and like you did and, and learned and grew and matured and developed. That's what the Scripture says, right? That he, he grew in favor and knowledge and he grew in flesh and he grew in the Spirit. At some point in Christ's life, he would come to the full knowledge of, of right and wrong, the full knowledge just like you and I did. And at some point later in life, he'd come to know that he was there to preach the kingdom of God and to end up paying the penalty for our sins. But what I want to tell you is, folks, the reason that he was willing. You see, Christ was eternally existent before Bethlehem. He was always there. There was never a time that he was not there. In the beginning, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and then the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But Christ, the, the, the second person of the Trinity, didn't began to exist at Bethlehem, but he took on humanity. He took on flesh at Bethlehem. So he agreed to come and to live among us and to be here for 33 years and to die on a cross and to spend three days in the grave and to descend into, uh, into the depths and take away the keys of death, hell, and the grave before he went back up to his father. He agreed to do all of that, folks, because he loves you because he loves you, because he loves me, because he loves this world, because he loves those who don't love him. Out of his great love, he lifted us up. Because he didn't want heaven without us, he made himself a little lower than the angels for a while and came and dwelt among us that we might have hope, that we might have peace, that we might have joy, and that we might be filled with the fullness of his love. <clears throat> Let's attempt, with the Lord's help, to sing another, to sing another chorus, uh, another, another Christmas song this morning. Let's see if we can get this done. With God's help, we will. Keeps wanting to go back to that very same one that we've already done before. I thought I knew how to use this toy, and it's just not wanting to cooperate with me this morning. That's all right. Keeps you humble, right? Keeps me humble. It's just not going to work. I don't want O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. I'm going to go back to my list, and we'll just do it a different way. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. I thought I had it all lined up. Here we go. Now it's right. God rest ye, merry gentlemen. 
skipping ahead in the program, Brother Allen. God rest ye, merry gentlemen. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Son of God by name, oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place, and with true love and charity. God is because of the joy that we have through Christ Jesus that we truly should celebrate uh, this Christmas uh, uh, season regardless of whether you've got a lot under the Christmas tree or nothing uh, we celebrate the fact that we are rich beyond this world's understanding or imagination uh, that one of these days we are going to enjoy the presence of our God forever and forever and forever. Suddenly, Luke says in verse 13, there was a great company of the heavenly host that appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace to men on whom God's favor rests. When the angels left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let's go to Bethlehem and let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Praise God. Let's go see. Let's go see. I gotta, I've got to see what's, what's, uh, uh, what those angels were talking about. Let's go and find out what the Lord has done. All right, let's see. <clears throat> Praise God. Hark the herald angels sing. Here we go. sing with me. The newborn king, he saw on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all the nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born. by high 
highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Praise God. Praise God. I love these hymns uh, of the church. They're hard to sing. They're hard to play. Uh, but, uh, boy, they sure are beautiful when we join our voices together and we sing these songs. <clears throat> what a wonderful way to celebrate as the church family. Luke, going back to Luke's story, he says, They hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby. It was lying in the manger when they had seen him. They spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Let me just stop right there and add this comment. Folks, it's an amazing story that we have to bring the world. Amen. How a God so loved the world that he would send his son to die in their place. How we had a debt of sin that we could never hope to pay, never hope to erase. No amount of money could ever pay for it. No amount of good deeds. It's not about karma. That as long as we do more good than harm, it'll be all right. There was a debt of sin, even just one sin. Even if there was just one sin to our credit, that was too much debt for us to ever be able to pay because a perfectly holy God demands a perfectly holy people. And the only way to get there was through the blood of this perfect sacrifice, the only perfect sacrifice that was Christ the Lord. Now, the shepherds didn't have the full story to tell. They only had the message that there's a baby born in Bethlehem that was announced by the angels. Something special about this child. There's something special. They had, they told their part of the message. They gave, folks, let me tell you what the Lord says to tell you about that today. You don't have to know everything about everything to be a witness of the good news of Jesus Christ. You know what you know. You've experienced what you have experienced, and you should share what God has done in your life. It's a fantastic story to hear what Leah said about God's intervention on behalf of, of her uh, daughter. But that story needs to be told, and it's got no greater impact than coming from Mama, right? Because she was there and experienced it. Your story, your testimony, what you have experienced of God, this world needs to hear about it and it doesn't say everybody believed does it Luke doesn't say everybody believed it says they were astonished at what they heard it's not your job to make them believe it's just your job to tell them about a God who loves them enough to get involved in the middle of whatever's going on in their life oh praise God I, I, I like that I didn't have that in my notes but I just felt like that's what we were supposed to say but Mary treasured up these things Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just 
as they had been told. Sister Hildy's going to come and minister in song next, and as she's making her way to the platform, let me just say, folks, the joyous days, the wonderful days, the days like today, the days when good things are happening in your life, the days when you see Christ doing awesome things, treasure those things up. <clears throat> treasure those things up in your heart. Amen. Because there's going to come dark days. There's going to come challenging days and painful days and hurtful days. Mary, you know, Simeon, we talked about in Sunday school, said there's going to be a sword that pierces even your heart. There were painful things in store for Mary. But she had laid up all of these things, the words of the angel, the visits of the shepherds and the wise men, and, and all these things. She had them treasured and laid up in her heart so that her faith would not fail her. Her confidence in God wouldn't fail her when things got tough. Amen. We need to heed that same message ourselves. When things are going well and we're walking in the sunlight of God's love and the blessings of God, lay those treasures up in your heart. Because they sure will make it easier, make it possible for you to get through those dark nights of the soul when you feel like a sword is piercing your own heart. Sister, I'm sorry. You go ahead. God bless. Right. God bless. See these books? They come in handy sometimes. Yes, amen. Number 77. You can sing along with me. What child is this? to watch your keeping. This is this Christ the King whom shepherds call and angels sing. He's here to bring him grace the way the song of Mary. So sleepy, who twists and seals for sinners near, the silent Lord is keeping. This, this is Christ the King, who shepherds call and angels sing. All right. Pastor Steve, if I could get you to uh, pass these candles out, uh, brother, I would, we're going to go ahead and do that at this point in the service. There are plenty, so if you'd like to take one, as soon as, uh, as, soon as Steve gets to the back, I'm going to have him turn the lights out in the sanctuary. Uh, 
And while he's passing these, 600 years before the birth of Christ, thereabout, God moved on a man named Isaiah. By the Spirit, Isaiah said, For unto us a child is born. 600 years before Christ. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful, <laughs> Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on forever. The zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. John would later say, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. And then he would say, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Christ Jesus. Praise God. So uh, once Steve gets the candles passed out, just taking twist yours on the bottom and it will come on and then we're going to turn the house lights out and guess what we're going to sing silent night before we get ready to receive communion together today Let me get the correct song called up here seated if you'd like 
I'm going to ask for uh, some help with passing communion uh, <clears throat> as I make my final remarks uh, this morning. The good thing about these nice little candles, you can just lay them right down and not have to worry about dripping wax or catching the pew on fire. So, uh, they're going to come by and wait upon you with the elements of communion. then we'll move forward. Do you know the story behind Silent Night? That hymn was written because many years ago a <clears throat> pastor was getting ready for midnight mass on Christmas Eve and discovered that the pipe organ in the cathedral was out of service. And so for this important service, he couldn't have the, the cathedral pipe organ to play these beautiful hymns like we've been singing. He began to pray and say, God, what, what can we do without the music, without the organ? What can we do? And that's where the words and the tune for Silent Night were born uh, out of that need. What a beautiful hymn it is, Silent Night holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child. What a beautiful, what a beautiful song uh, that is. God never fails us. God always has a plan. God always provides. Uh, you know, I kind of think that maybe it was the Lord's hand in that, that the organ wouldn't work that night so that that song could be written down and you and I could enjoy it all these many years later and sing about a silent night. Isaiah said in those scriptures that I just read that Jesus is the wonderful counselor. Aren't you glad we've got a great advisor who's a wonderful counselor? My wife and I can get together and talk about things and try to figure out a plan, but we've got a greater advisor that we can, that we can contact. I can meet with the board of this church and we can discuss things and try to figure out a plan, but there's a greater advisor that we seek his help. Uh, and so that is what Isaiah said. He's that wonderful counselor. He said that Jesus is the mighty God. <laughs> he's not just, you know, he's not just a God. He's not just a Savior. But he is the mighty God. There is nothing that is impossible for our God. He is every whit God. He can save. He can heal. He can make whole. He can redeem. Whatever the need is, it was by his word that everything that has been created was created. And all the created universe hangs on his word word. That's what keeps it moving and functioning and happening right now is the Word of God sustains this universe. And one of these days when he's done with it, he's going to say the Word and it's all going to perish at the Word of God and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And that's another sermon altogether, but what a mighty God we serve. Isaiah said he's the everlasting Father. He's God in flesh and he's God eternal. He's everlasting. There's not going to be a last day of his reign, but he reigns forever and ever. And it says, Isaiah said he was the prince of peace. Whatever you're dealing with right now, whatever tomorrow may bring for you. You see, I thought about this. This Christmas at my house is different than last year. Not everybody's there that was there. And so it's going to be different. I've had some family members in my extended family that have passed away. Things have happened in my own household. Things are different just in, at 2251 Airport Road. Some of you have said farewell to loved ones this past year, and you won't be celebrating this Christmas with them. And so that changes things. That changes things when you celebrate these holidays. Even some that have lost dear loved ones that weren't just this last year, but you still miss their spot, their presence at the table. Aren't you glad that he is the Prince of Peace? <laughs> that in the midst of all of that, we know, we know that while we celebrate these holidays with a lonely spot in our heart here, one of these days will be complete again and the circle will be unbroken and we will be with our loved one and with the Lord and we won't feel those lonely, 
empty feelings in our heart for a loved one that has journeyed on ahead of us. Can I tell you that as we have lit these candles this morning, the one in the middle is the Christ candle. Because he lives, we can face whatever it is we have to face. Amen. Because he lives, we can face today and tomorrow. Because he lives, these little battery-powered candles that I passed out among you that we used, because he is the light. Scripture over and over again says that he is the light, he is the light. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who hates, who does evil hates the light and won't come to the light. John says, Then Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And Matthew reports, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do people put their light under a bushel or under a bowl, but they put it on a stand so that all in the room may enjoy its light. I'm telling you, folks, Jesus is the light, and we have been given the light, so we are to take the light with us. I, I, I know you're holding elements of communion, so I'm going to wrap this up very quickly. What are the benefits? What are the benefits of light? Oh, I could spend a long time, could preach a whole sermon right here, but I'll very quickly say light reveals what was hidden. The light of God helped Leah's daughter find the wallet and then also see there was a reason why I was delayed. Thank you, God, for the delay. Light always, 100% of the time, always defeats the darkness. That's right. There is not any darkness that can, even, the, even this little flickering light, as weak as it is, turn off all the lights in the room, and even this weak little light defeats the darkness. The amount of light that you carry in your life defeats no matter how much darkness the devil can throw your way. Light can show you the way when you can't see how to go. You know, you think you know the way around your bedroom or the way around your house, and then you get up in the night and you don't turn the light on, and your toe tells you that you forgot that the <laughs> something was there, you know? Wham! Uh, when kids were younger, you step on a toy that was left out, to, or now it's the dog that leaves out something, you know, and you step on something. Uh, light shows the way. All you had to do was turn on a light, and you wouldn't have stubbed your toe or stepped on that thing. Light shows us the way in life. Light warms us. Light gives us safety. Light gives us vision. And the last thing I want to say about this before we receive communion is, you know, light has health benefits for us. He gives you vitamin. It's good for you to spend some time in the light. And I'm talking about physically. You get some time in the, in, in the light because of which vitamin is it? Is it D? God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. As good as it is physically for us to spend some time in the light, oh, it's essential for us spiritually to spend time in the light Amen. of God's Word. Our soul will wither and die without time in the light of God. So uh, John 3, I already read this, but I'm going to read one more time. I can't hear it enough times before we eat the wafer and drink uh, the cup together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not enter this world to condemn the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. For whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed on the only Son of God. And then Luke 22 tells us, when the hour came, Jesus reclined at the table and, as the, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I've earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. A literal translation of that verse, Jesus said, I have desired with desire. <laughs> In other words, 
man, I've been looking forward to this. I've really been looking forward to this. <laughs> Folks, why? Because he was about to enter into his passion. He was about to share the way into the kingdom of God with his disciples so they could share it with others so that you and I might eventually hear and be saved ourselves. He was looking forward to that moment. Judas was sitting at the table. Judas, the betrayer, was there. But the Lord could say, I have desired with the desire to receive this meal with you because, guys, it's the last time I'm going to eat with you on earth. <laughs> it's the last time we're going to dine together as a family here. But, oh, there's coming a day when we're going to sit at the table in the Father's house and we'll enjoy the fresh bread and the fresh cup in the presence of the Father. So that's what communion is celebrates looking back to what Jesus already has done and looking forward to what is still yet to come the greatest is still ahead of us Luke records this he says I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God so he took the cup and when he had given thanks he said take this and divide it among yourselves for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you stand with me as we get ready to receive the elements of communion? We've celebrated. We've sung songs together. We've laughed. We've rejoiced. We've given thanks to God. And now we take a moment to receive the body and the blood of Christ. Because he came we have this opportunity because he stayed until he finished the job we have this opportunity he didn't just come for a vacation he didn't just come for a visit but he came until it was all accomplished the will of the father was done and he could hang on a cross until he could say that's it it's finished I've done all that I needed to do into your hands I commit my spirit and then he could give up the spirit and die for us that we might have salvation through him. So he commanded his disciples to take and receive his body, which was the bread that was broken for them. Would you receive the wafer with me right now? Dear Lord Jesus, we give you thanks that you were willing to take the chastisement that brought us peace upon you. You were willing to pay the price that we might have freedom. By your stripes, we are healed. I'm healed in my mind. I'm healed in my soul. I'm healed in my body. By your stripes, I am healed. I receive that as a child of God. As surely as I can pull up to the physical table and lift a fork and put a morsel of food in my mouth and receive that food into my body, by faith as I receive this piece of bread, I receive your healing into my body today, God. It is my right as a child of God. It is the bread of the children, and I receive it right now. Things I know that are going on in my body, things that I don't even know are happening, God, you have brought healing to me on every cell, every muscle, every nerve ending, every aspect of my body, in Jesus' name. Luke says, in like manner, the cup, after they had eaten, he said, this cup is poured out for you as the new covenant in my blood. Would you receive the cup with me? Thank you, God, for the blood. Thank you, God, for the blood that was shed for the remission of my sins. By your blood, I am free and clear of my past. All my debt has been paid, and I am made holy in you by the washing of the blood, by the cleansing of the blood. By Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you have given me a new covenant and a better covenant written on written on my heart and not on tablets of stone you've given me both the desire and the ability to live a life that is acceptable unto you i give you praise <clears throat> i give you praise isaiah 53 and 5 you know this 
let, let, let's, let's close by, by singing the words of this verse. Uh, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Surely he bore our sorrows, and by his stripes we are healed. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I love you. I'm so thankful to be able to serve God as pastor here at Lake Hamilton Assembly. I'm so thankful for you. And you're, if I don't see you again before Christmas, Merry Christmas. We will have service at 6 o'clock. If you're able to come, come and be with us tonight at 6. But if I don't see you then, God 